Good afternoon, class. My name is Christopher Stonewall. And today we are going to be discussing a painting of the screen. Um, and for you guys looking at this picture, it should be what well, painting. It should look pretty familiar. Um, and that's because it's actually one of the world's most famous paintings. It was actually just recently sold for over a hundred and fifty million dollars in 2012, just to show you the popularity and how much people value this painting. Um, so in order to actually understand this painting, which is kind of the main goal of this video, in order to understand it, you must first understand the artist himself so you can actually analyze the picture the way it was supposed to be analyzed. And the artist himself, himself is um, Edward Munch. So just to give you some background about Edward, he was pretty much, um, you know, he was born in a farm house in this little small village in the United Kingdom. Um, some background information on his village. I mean, it, it was pretty small. Then it wasn't no urban environment like London or Paris or the other, you know, big cities at his time. It was just a nice small town. He didn't have much going on there. Um, the population was very low, so he pretty much didn't have much going on at that time for him. So I mean, art was kind of like something he kind of favored, saying there was nothing else to pretty much do. And it's just a video of just a, the town itself in present day. All right, so just to fast forward a few years, when Edward was around six or five, his mother actually passed away in the year 1868. And as a kid, you know, this can, you can only imagine how much this affected him. And it was just, you know, devastating experience for him. But it also doesn't help that nine years down the line in 1877, um, he actually lost his favorite sister. So again, that was that's a lot for a kid before, you know, that, that's a lot for anybody, definitely a kid. And, you know, I feel like he didn't have enough time to grieve after his mother's death, just for his sister to die literally in the same decade, pretty much, you know, within that 10 year gap. Um, to lose that, you know, t two people you love and only have your mom, I mean, your father and um, sister laugh. I just know that's a lot to deal with. But again, you know, his father did make sure um, he was good. But in 19, I mean, 1889, his father also passed away. So that's just a few years after his sister, around, what, like 10 years after he lost his father. So it's like, for him, I only can imagine, he felt like he lose people literally every few years. He always lost the closest people to him. So now at this point, it's kind of just him and his sister. And you already know his sister is going through a lot herself due to the fact that, you know, they all losing the same people that they love. And he probably, you know, dealing with a lot of abandonment and stuff like that <clears throat> and stuff like that. So again, after the death of his father, actually, um, you know, his sister was also in a way taken away from him because she was sent to a mental hospital. And just, you know, some background information, mental hospitals back then were way different than they are now. In the past, you necessarily weren't that, it wasn't easy to visit people in mental hospitals it was almost like prison in a way but yeah of course in you know present day you can kind of just set up an appointment and visit people in there at any time basically but back then like I said it was not common for you to visit the people that was in mental hospitals it was borderline prison so you know at this point he definitely was by himself Literally everybody he grew up with was gone in terms of family. So, you know, that's a lot to deal with. <clears throat> which kind of leads into my next point, which is the depression and the abandonment and the, how scared he must have felt. And that's kind of what led him to paint the picture of the screen itself. And as you guys see right here on the, um, 
in the right corner. It's about to blow up pretty soon. But in this show on Netflix called 13 Reasons Why, uh, the main character, I forgot her name exactly, but um, she suffered a lot of depression. She felt alone. And pretty much she was, in terms of emotionally, pretty similar to what Edward was feeling. But unfortunately, in her case, she committed suicide. So that was, um, you know, really unfortunate. But in Edward's case, he actually decided to um, paint the scream, the painting that he's so famous for, um, to express his feelings that he was going through. Which leads me to my next point, which is actually understanding the story behind the painting itself. So some background information on it. He considered this painting to be a soul painting, which means pretty much it just came from the soul as in like, this is his honest, how he felt at the time. It's no sugar coating it. So pretty much the painting is almost like a, a autobiography of everything that was happening, all the feelings that was running through his head and you know, pretty much like everything that was bothering him at the time. And real quick, I'm going to stop just to show you guys this um, Looney Tunes cartoon of the painting just to show you how famous it was. So, yeah, you know, after seeing that, you can just see like how, you know, most people kind of analyze the painting um, as just a guy screaming for help, basically, which kind of leads into the next point we're going to be talking about, which is actually understanding the settings of the painting so to actually understand the settings of the painting you know we actually go into a journal that was dated january 22nd um, 1892 where she's pretty much just talking about the whole scene and everything and um he talks about how in the painting it's pretty much just him just walking along the bridge with his two friends and the sun went down and out of nowhere, he said he felt the gush of sadness. And out of, you know, out of nowhere, again, the sky just turned bloody red. And, you know, bloody red reminded him of all the death and suffering that he felt throughout his life for all the people that he lost. So you only can imagine the mental breakdown that he went through. And it's just a quick um, 3D animation of um, the painting itself. Somebody, you know, just made like a goofy 3D painting. I mean, animation. Yeah, so that was that just to show you guys, um, you know, exactly, I guess, how he was feeling in a more active, physical way. But again, he was suffering from a lot of anxiety. So if anything, he just had like an anxiety or a mental breakdown on a bridge and he felt that no one cared about what he was going through. So that's why he put himself in the middle of the bridge and just had his friends walking off because that's what happened on that day. All right, so just to fast forward a few years after the painting, he did this painting a few times, actually. But um, in 1908, unfortunately, you know, he suffered from an another huge nervous breakdown that actually had him go to the hospital in Denmark. And, you know, at this point in his life, he kind of was just really alone. I know he he haven't seen his sister in years at this point. Um, also, another fact about the bridge, he was just always talking about how on one end, one end of the bridge, you heard animals dying, and then on the other edge, I mean, other end of the bridge, you heard um, people in the mental hospital screaming, and he was pretty much just saying how at some point you couldn't actually pick out which was which, so pretty much all the screams just started to sound the same, and that's what kind of caused him just to go crazy in his head, hearing all that chaos, and knowing what he went through it just was a lot for him. But if you guys actually want to learn more about it outside of this video, I suggest you guys go to um, BBC. That was a good source that I use. You can go to thehistory.com or you can even go to Khan Academy. I know Khan Academy has some interesting videos and audio books like this that can help you and guide you through learning more about Edward. And or you can learn more about the Scream or just any other paintings that he did because 
actually is famous for a lot of different paintings but thank you guys um i hope you learned a lot i hope you can actually understand the um meaning behind his painting now and i'm gonna just end it off with um my student artwork piece that's supposed to be the screen but i want it to be a little different and i wanted to do it in just a plain black pen and i want to leave a little empty space just to show how he felt empty and incomplete in himself so thank you guys